Tell us about the book, No One Wins Alone. Yeah, you know, it uh, was an amazing uh, process, actually. Uh, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done, to be honest with you. And everybody says it's hard to write a book, and I understand why now. Um, you know, I've been approached to write a book for many years, and and uh, wasn't quite sure that I had anything to say that uh, someone might be interested in. But uh, um, I really thought that uh, it'd be interesting to do a book on on teamwork, leadership, uh, you know, my experiences through my uh, NHL career and obviously growing up um, led to all those amazing experiences I had as a pro. And hopefully somebody can actually uh, enjoy reading the book. Mark, at this point in your life, in your career, all the accomplishments, the things that you've been able to endure, the ups and the downs, you name it, why is this the right time to write this book? Well, I think for me, uh, you know, uh, retiring gave me an opportunity to really reflect back on my career. Uh, when you're in, as you know, uh, yourself, when you're playing, you, you don't really think about what's happening uh, in the past or in the future. You're so in the present uh, that you just, every day you wake up trying to figure out a way how to win each and every game and become a better player. Um and in retirement, for me, it gave me time to reflect. I was asked to speak about my experiences on certain occasions and started taking notes and gathering more information and thinking more about what had happened and transpired, uh, getting more information. And um, I just got read the, met Jimmy Roberts, who had written a book about breaking the slump in golf, which had a lot to do with, uh, uh, you know, psychology and sport. And um, I think for me, that was a real kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know, gateway into writing a book is that I believe Jimmy could really understand what I was trying to say and write it in the way that I'd wanted him to write it. And I think that trust factor with Jimmy really kind of gave me the confidence to go ahead and, and take on this, uh, this endeavor, which it turned out to be, like I said, one of the hardest things I've ever done. Mark, I want to dig into the psychology of sports. We, you know, we know a lot of people that are same and, when I hear people talk about you, they say, when you talk, they listen. Now, you're the only player to captain two different franchises to the Stanley Cup, and you have leadership awards named after you. But where do you think the impetus for your leadership comes from? Well, I think, you know, I got a great insight into, uh, um, you know, team and teamwork and, and, and making people believe in themselves uh, through my dad uh, as, a, as a coach. Um, and coaching young players at an early age, winning a national championship in Canada when I was a stick boy and seeing the way that he, you know, brought the team, galvanized the team together, the way he talked to the players, the way he helped the players really believe in themselves. Um, You know, for me, I understood that, you know, hockey, like many team sports, uh, as the book says, no one, you can't win alone. Uh, you need everybody to be at their best. Uh, nothing other than their best will be good enough. And uh, how do you inspire players to uh, motivate themselves? I think what gets lost sometimes is uh, people, leaders, coaches feel and take it upon themselves to motivate players. And I believe that it's more important to inspire players. And if they're inspired uh, uh, and they believe in you as a coach or a leader, uh, they'll motivate themselves for the betterment of the team. Mm. And uh, that's what I've always really tried to focus in on is just trying to make everybody, each and every individual, you know, really understand how important they are to the team, no matter how big or small the role is. And, um, and, uh, you know, and and I think because of that, you get, you know, you get the buy-in from the players and, and then you can, you know, you walk in on this journey together, you know, Abe Lincoln said, no man can govern another without his consent. And in order to lead anybody, you need to earn that trust and you need to earn the right to lead anybody. Mark Messier, ESPN hockey analyst, six-time, get this, six-time Stanley Cup champion. If only he was a king, an L.A. king, he might have had ten. (laughs) (laughs) No, Y'all might have had one back then. Exactly. I wish he would have been an L.A. king, but that 
is far. Well, Wayne, Wayne got him close in one year in uh, 1993 before we won the 94 of the Rangers. He got him close and uh, couldn't quite get it over the hump. No, I know. What athletes today, though, Mark, impress you both on and off the field with their leadership skills? Oh, well, <laughs> that's a great question. There's so many great players uh, in all sports right now. Um, I think it's it's it hard it would be hard not to open that conversation with Tom Brady and what he's been able to do, uh, not only only in New England, but completely change the culture and the attitude when he went to Tampa Bay. And I think when you look at players, you know, and what Tom's done in his career, but you know, how can a singular player go into a franchise like he did? Obviously, he had the talent around him. Um, yeah, in Tampa, and yet you know all the pieces that were required. But without Tom, they weren't quite there. Uh, maybe their expectations weren't there. Maybe they weren't thinking the right way about how to win. Uh, but when he went there, he changed all that. There's, and there's no denying that he did. Uh, he was a big part of that whole championship. And you know, um, you know, his play. Forty-four years old. You know, off off the field on the field um he he's right up there with uh, in the in the iconic athlete to have uh, ever played a team sport mark i gotta ask you know I, max and i grew up in a new jersey new york area key played here in the city what is the feeling like when you win in new york well for me coming to new york uh the first thing that i was really uh, happy about is you know playing in edmonton for 12 years and the the attention that the Canadian teams get for hockey, obviously, when I came to New York, uh, there was a I felt immediately the passion of the fan base, and hockey actually mattered in New York City, which I was so happy about because I think one of the things that drive teams is the uh, external pressure that's put on the teams because of the passion of fan base and the people around that care about what's going on. I think that was a huge part of us winning in New York and collectively with the fans and the team, we were able to, you know, walk together through five championships in seven years. When I got to New York, um, that passion was there, um, you know, 54 years at the time when I came 51 years without a championship. Um, and then, you know, you know, three years later, we're able to, to, you know, to, as they say, break the, <laughs> break the curse of, of whatever curse it was uh, uh, to win a Stanley Cup in New York. And when you do that, um, you know, original six team, 54-year uh, drought, uh, generations of fans uh, that had never seen a Stanley Cup hoisted on Madison Square Garden, um, the feeling was incredible. Uh, something that it's hard to explain with words, uh, you know, talking about it right now, you get filled up with the, with the emotion of those moments. And here we are, you know, almost 20 years later or more, I guess now, um, and still, you know, talking about it and still getting, uh, you know, thank yous on the streets of New York from many different types of people who were there, who witnessed it, who saw it, who got swallowed up in the, in the whole, uh, you know, environment of that cup run. So, you know, winning in New York on any team, I think brings in the same amount of, um, you know, emotion from, from the fan base and because of the history around this area and, and the difficulty in winning in this area because of the, the amount of media and attention that's put on any one of these teams. And, and of course, all the, the, you know, distractions that can come playing in New York City. So, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an incredible feeling to be able to, you know, climb any mountain for, on a team sport here in New York City.